everyone. Uh, today we are joined by uh, Alejandra Carrion um, for our podcast. I think we are going to have a great discussion ahead of us. Uh, Alejandra has wonderfully and very generously agreed to talk to us today um, about her research, about her community work, and above all, um, to talk about the work that she believes in. Um, Alejandra Carrion identifies herself as a two-spirit South American artist, creator, and healer. She is a member of the indigenous community called Catrileo Carrion and currently a BMA researcher at the Global Center for Advanced Studies. Hi, Alejandra. It's so nice to have you today. Um, how is it going? How is, how is your work these days? Hi, Tilini. Thanks for the introduction. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm okay. Mm -hmm. um, it's morning here. Uh, okay. It's a bit cold, okay. even though it's summer. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's I'm doing fine. Mm -hmm. And well, the community work and, and my personal work has been a bit delayed, you know, right. uh, pan pandemic and social mm -hmm. uprisings. But mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of things we are. Um, we're talking about, um, yes. discussing about, yes. uh, regarding identity, regarding uh, uh, sexuality, you know, um, gender, mm -hmm. and and it's awesome. There's a lot of uh, we're going places. I yes, mean, yes, absolutely. Th that, that's the, the the best part. I mean, having not so much work allows you to think mm -hmm. and discuss things mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. a bit better. So mm -hmm. I'm that's grateful great. for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, let's let's first uh, talk about before moving on to your community work. I think which needs a lot of a considerable amount of our time. We will just talk about um, your your academic and your research engagement. I met you at JCAS. Um, both of us take similar courses, and I've seen uh, uh, you and your engagement when it comes to research and academic, um, you know, areas. And it's been awesome. I would love to know more about what you're interested in and why have you selected this field of study, you know, the humanities in general as your preferred field of study? Wow. That, that, that's a great question. Um, uh, I think, um, I cannot answer that without uh, first uh, putting into the table uh, because I'm from an indigenous community, you know, in mm -hmm. South America. So mm -hmm. uh, the word researcher or research, mm -hmm. uh, it has, it hits us differently, you know, Absolutely. in a way that, uh, mm -hmm. that we have been the subject of research, you know, from this white uh, man that comes from the continental philosophy and yeah. and tell us how to live our world so Absolutely. in that way it's it has been hard you know mm -hmm. like um putting down that prejudice mm -hmm. but it's also been really healing you know to mm -hmm. uh, first being able to 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 be part of dcas mm -hmm. and and from this academic uh uh, stand, standpoint, you know, that it's mm -hmm. not the ivory tower dialectic that uh, we are used to mm -hmm. to met with academia, you know. Um, Absolutely. I think that yeah. I'm in the humanities because um, mm -hmm. philosophy, uh, it's really important in mm -hmm. Mapuche culture. Uh, I mean, from when we weave to when we speak to when we think about uh, the things around us, mm -hmm. it's all um, soaked with with philosophy, you know. So it's, it, it's really um, reassuring and also mm -hmm. gives me more perspective to see like uh, all these philosophers, you know, discussing things that uh, in my particular term has been around for like 4,000 years, you know. It's <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> That is true. So, mm -hmm. so th that's a um, that's a sight for sore eyes in a way mm -hmm. uh, that that we are uh, all coming together uh, from mm -hmm. different uh, places and we are building like these bridges, epistemological bridges, philosophical mm -hmm. bridges between each other, and that's uh, that's amazing. That's uh, that's why I mean at Dicas and and that's why I mean Dicas not in another in institution. I have been in a few institutions of mm -hmm. higher education here in Chile mm -hmm. and 
they're all a scam. They're all like a pyramid scheme. They all want you to be in debt and they all want your money. And well, it's kind of the status of the world right now, right? Yeah, that is absolutely true. Um, I'm, I'm also, I think we, we are, since we are devoting a lot of time to discuss your community work, um, for, for people of this part of the world in the global south, uh, in Sri Lanka, could we um, talk a little bit about your community and how, um, um, your, your, how you would define um, and your community work um, from the position of, a, you know, a humanities student? A researcher. Okay, uh, the community. Uh, my community would be. Um, it's basically uh, two families. Mm -hmm. That it's uh, my family with uh, my brother's husband family, right. and uh, we are mostly two spirit people. We are right. from five to seven people, depending on how everyone's feeling. Okay. <laughs> basically, uh, we all. Uh, have a background in art and yes. in academy also okay. so it makes it a lot easier to you know have these deep and um, uh, hard conversations about uh, the system we mostly do political art and mm -hmm. and we work with love basically that that's our that's what we us together you know <laughs> we we have this uh, methodology that we have been as a community developing which is called a uh, poyegun no tramcam which would mean mm -hmm. uh, to have affectionate conversations okay. you know it's it, it's it's like an interview i think this would call qualify as an affectionate conversation <laughs> okay uh, because it's not like an interview when you're uh taking just uh, information from the person you know you're Absolutely. allowing its memory to unfold you know mm -hmm, and sometimes mm -hmm. that takes a lot of time that takes a lot of energy a lot of mm -hmm. resources mm -hmm. but um what you can get from there it's beautiful i mean in a way that uh chilean history it's like totally written by someone who wasn't there okay. and someone who who decided Right. Uh, to leave some things behind, you know, mm -hmm. that okay. something wouldn't go through history. Mm -hmm. So when you we use this methodology, we can find traces of history that mm -hmm. was meant to be forgotten or erased. So right. um, maybe it's not that much, but we found these little gems of things of people who say, hey, I remember and I kept this with me. Because mm -hmm. I knew that one day I could be able to talk about this, you know, mm -hmm. understate mm -hmm. this, this, and so on, so so. Um, that's basically how uh, we, we do a lot of work with weaving. I mean, we, mm -hmm. we teach uh, weaving skills to different right. communities, you know, trans men uh, or other indigenous communities that are, uh, you know, self-determining here in, in Chile. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, um, in order to like, you know, uh, to, to, um, you know, uh, to be prepared for this discussion, I, I, I just had a, um, kind of look at one of the videos where you talk about, um, uh, about planetary solidarity and, um, mm -hmm. how it seeks to combine this very, uh, reflective ap approaches, you know, about uh, like, approaches like friendship, the community, the collective alliances, all this together to, to find the kind of systemic oppression that, that we find ourselves in. Um, how, how, do you, how do you further uh, talk about this idea of planetary, planetary solidarity and how does it inform uh, your, your uh, so-called active, activist kind of interventions? Yeah, um, uh, the planet solidarity. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, um, maybe first I should say that uh, in the way we, uh, as a community, mm -hmm. approach life in general, mm -hmm. we don't uh, we don't set ourselves aside from what you could call nature. You know what what your context is, mm -hmm. so that that solid. Planetary solidarity is also, uh, it's the, um, how do you say it in English? It's the Pacific uh, firing. That's how okay. it's called. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. 
that it's these these chain mountains that go around like a, a part of the world <laughs> and which uh, connect a lot of uh, continents and, and countries. Mm -hmm. So we believe that um, the energy hidden in, inside these volcanoes, mm -hmm. it's weaving us all together, you know, like, mm -hmm. so our solidarity, our solidarity comes in building uh, bridges, and right. political bridges, between I don't know the east and the west, uh, mm -hmm. using the, the the excuse you know of this chain mountain, because mm -hmm. uh, this is also important. Uh, we define ourselves in our community as Epu Pillan, which would mean mm -hmm. Epu meaning two, and Pillan mm -hmm. meaning the sacred and destructive energy that resides within volcanoes. Mm -hmm. So we have a volcanic relationship as a community. Mm -hmm. uh, because our two-spiritedness is more, uh, it's like human-non-human -human duality, more than human-human right. male-female duality. So mm -hmm. for us, uh, uh, the territory, it's, it's extremely important uh, mm -hmm. to build that solidarity. You have to recognize... Uh, I mean, the colonization is, is not a metaphor, right? You, mm -hmm. there, there, there are land that needs to be think in another way I, it, it's not about ownership either uh, nobody owns anything it's everything's Absolutely. borrowed Absolutely. so so yeah it, it's not been that easy to to go away from the academia you know mm -hmm. uh, because right now we're just speaking about this planetary solidarity mm -hmm. uh, as a community too, but uh, I mean, it's also really hard to actually enforce it and take a plane, you know, Absolutely. everywhere and start working. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, from, from now on, it's based mostly in academic work, how we're trying mm -hmm. to build this solidarity. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, and the last thing would be like, uh, half of my community is living in California right now okay okay because they're getting doctorates so there's oh, a lot right. of um uh, there's a lot of uh, prepping time i think I and mean, mm -hmm. in five to ten years we would have like some concrete and practical things around mm -hmm. that i believe mm -hmm. that is that is wonderful uh alejandro how do you think um uh it, it's important that you um, you know, organically bring the kind of knowledge systems in your community um, into spaces like GCAS where, you know, uh, we are, we are sort of, um, where we have a very inclusive and we have a very dynamic space to discuss um, the ways in which different knowledge systems interact with each other. Um, so, um, were you finding any um, how should I how should I say were you finding any any difficulties or you know to find spaces outside you know places like Chicas to sort of um, talk about your knowledge systems uh, to talk about the kind of you know the the community work that you are engaged in um, how 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 did you how were you able to carve out that space for you? Um. Well, I think that, um, I, and I'm, I might be talking just from my personal That's fine. point of yeah. view here, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I have always, uh, from, from since I have memory and ha I have um, engaged with the world, basically, I've been like, a, I have never felt like in a totally mm -hmm. safe place because Absolutely. there's, mm -hmm. there's um, also a, an essence, I don't like the word essence at all, but we're, <laughs> since we're reading Hegel and all he says is like essence, 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 I'm like, yeah, all right, I'm gonna use it. Uh, but my essence, it's really provocative, you know? Right. So I also kind of find these places where they allow me to mm -hmm. say some things that might be uncomfortable yeah. or might be awkward, mm -hmm. but in a way that I don't get like, attacked you know right. it's not okay. you're you're not breaking like the fifth wall you know you're just mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. making them think uh, another thing too, mm -hmm. uh, according to what they have established and i think that 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 might be the the hardest thing that i have found because uh i mean i'm transgender now so it's like mm -hmm. 
there's no more barriers for me. Like I can change right. like like this. Okay. But people have a hard time changing their belief system when it's rooted in in an authority male figure, like a, right. a professor, a father figure, a grandparent mm-hmm. who told you that the world was set like this. Mm-hmm. And then you have you encounter the opposite or, or something that goes uh, away from that rule. Mm-hmm. And there's the conflict. So yeah, mm-hmm. I'm I generate sometimes a lot of conflict more than I would like to, but I think it's a positive one, a one that uh, generates, Absolutely. I don't know, mm-hmm. adaptability mm-hmm. In, in other people. Yeah. Um, in those lines that you talked about, like uh, building very safe and enabling spaces for, uh, for people to, to you know, um, to talk about um, the their knowledge systems, their, their their positions, their vulnerabilities. How do you think your your work that you are doing right now can help to foster and nurture a healthy environment for the future generation of your community? Um, especially given that we are we are living in a time when there are you know the fascist politics, um, you know environmental destruction. Um, systemic racism, everything is taking hold of us. So how do you think um, your engagement can sort of have this, build these spaces for the future generation? Wow, well, that's an awesome question. I love that question. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, my research is, uh, my personal research, like at Chica, it, it's mm-hmm. focusing on that. I mean, I'm, okay. I'm still like working through a lot. Mm-hmm. But I'm thinking about weaving as an emancipatory practice uh, that uh-huh. can free the mind, the spirit, and the body from the hold of fascism, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, weaving, it's, it's such a beautiful thing. It's like mm-hmm. uh, it has math in it. It has philosophy. It has everything. It has, like, this material... Uh, dimension that it's mm-hmm. so real and so it's an algorithm it's the first okay. algorithm i mean it has an input and you go through a mechanism and mm-hmm. then it goes the output okay. and if the output ain't right it's because w- whether you have a problem in the input or while you were doing the mechanism mm-hmm. so uh there's a lot of weaving techniques and ways to do it mm-hmm. that each I'm from different uh, indigenous parts of the world, you know, mm-hmm. okay. but uh, in they all hold uh, a secret of how those societies were uh, built the way they, they did, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. there's, it is, I think it's one of the most overlooked practices because it's, it seemed like, like it's just an object, you know, okay. like you're mm-hmm. weaving an object when, honestly it's both an object and a subject mm-hmm. and i know but that by saying that i'm generating a lot of trouble with the lacanian community maybe but uh, <laughs> but i i think we need to have those kind of conversations and Absolutely. say like hey mm-hmm. this knowledge that comes from whatever x y c years far back mm-hmm. uh, is it has a dialectic of object and subject mm-hmm. within itself. Uh, when you weave, you have to create this positive infinity in a mm-hmm. way, like materially creating it, mm-hmm. making the loops in order to weave. So there's a lot of things that are that I'm reading right now, and that mm-hmm. through Gikas, I'm, I'm getting to to get more of a grasp of them. Right. That I see them in weaving, uh, like, <coughs> like in my face it's it's wow. quite amazing how much uh, wisdom does mm-hmm. that practice has and mm-hmm. i think that that if i i don't know if it's built but if i decode maybe a way to approach this kind of knowledges that it could be weaving it could be gardening mm-hmm. in order to dis- distillate maybe uh, right. this sort of of experience mm-hmm. that can that can ultimately lead you to universalism, you know, mm-hmm. and drive you away from fascism. So that that's kind of Absolutely. way that mm-hmm. that I tr- I'm trying to <clears throat> to put it uh, on paper and on and on, on life. You know, mm-hmm. it's not been that that easy because 
I mean, weaving, even though it's it's hard, uh, I mean, it's not that hard to get yourself weaving okay. when you're turning it apart and mm -hmm. and reducing it to doing like a close reading to the loom and, and the thread. Mm -hmm. uh, it gets harder and harder and harder because <laughs> it's like math. I mean, right. there's there's like one possibility when when it becomes real, and you're mm -hmm. like searching for that, searching for that, and searching mm -hmm. for that. You talked about the, the kind of uprisings that that is happening in Chile right now, and uh, how it, how like other parts of the world, the arts and culture uh, and humanities have been defunded in Chile. Would you want to comment on that, Alejandra, if that's okay with you? Or, um... Yeah, it, it's okay. I mean, right. I don't know the, the, like the real numbers, like mm -hmm. how, how actually less right. we're having. But uh, for example, we uh, always uh, postulate uh, to, to these fundings of the government mm -hmm. in order to do art, uh, mm -hmm. which we, I don't know, we can buy cameras and right. then do this and... A lot of stuff and we are pretty good at it at it we, we okay. always get like super high score and mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. but now they haven't like told us anything okay and through a friend we know that they already revised all the projects mm -hmm. but they haven't told anyone anything because i think they're discussing money you know mm -hmm. how mm -hmm. how much actual money could be right thrown into because uh, we're in the vaccination process here and mm -hmm. everything, it's like uh, all the money is going there. And there's actually no signs of where we could know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I ask, I ask for un by unconventional methods. You know, I'm, I'm a radiesthesia <laughs> therapist, so I asked my pendulum. Right. And it told me like uh, August. Uh, mm -hmm. But we used to know in... February, late February, if we have won the, the money or not. And it's, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it actually allows you to live through the year. So it's mm -hmm. kind of getting dire mm -hmm. a bit. I mean, I have my way to, to make money appear in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Through readings, uh, I sell my weavings, my paintings. I yes. don't know. It's, mm -hmm. it's not really a problem. But, mm -hmm. but it's, there are people who, that's their only income. You know, that's right, the only way they right. can survive. And mm -hmm. and they're so, how can I say, they're so on their own. I mean, they don't have right. a, like this provision thing that they force mm -hmm. you to make. Mm -hmm. They have to pay a lot of taxes. It, it It's looking really awful. But I think we're all hanging in there because we're mm -hmm. changing our constitution. I think right. we're right. one of the few countries who actually got there. Mm -hmm. Uh and we're all putting our, our eggs in that basket, absolutely, basically. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you mentioned this a couple of times, Alejandra, and I, I would like to sort of, um, because what we mostly hear is kind of like the mainstream kind of the narratives of about alternative uh, sexual and gender identities. Uh, how are you, how is your process of transitioning? And how was, how, how was, uh, your community's kind of support and their reaction to that? I think um, the most, uh, I, I don't want to, how can I say it? Uh, mm -hmm. The thing that, that for me was more, most, most shocking was that nobody was amazed. Like nobody was surprised. It's the <laughs> okay. old way like, oh, okay. Like it, it made perfect sense to them. Like more sense than it actually right. makes to me. Right. So. okay. <clears throat> So uh, it was really funny. Like uh -huh. I was the one with the problem with it, honestly. So now they've been extremely supportive. Right. Uh, but I think I would like make a distinction here. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, if this is a real distinction. It's just that how am I, I'm feeling it right now. Right. Right. Uh, th this could, could totally change over time. But mm -hmm. um, it's like uh, the, the epupillan part of me, like the mm -hmm. two-spiritedness, yes. Okay. It comes to answer these ancestral questions and problematics right. that we've been carrying on as, as, mm -hmm. as, as a people for uh -huh. far too long. Mm -hmm. And I think that my transsexualism, is, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it comes to answer 
other things more related to maybe the present, but more so the future right. in a way. Right. Because I have to, well, and why am I transitioning? I mean, mm -hmm. I could, it's because I want that, uh, I don't know, 10, 20 years when someone hears me speak mm -hmm. and at somewhere and tell my story, mm -hmm. that that story uh, <clears throat> makes uh, a little boy or a little girl feel more confident Absolutely. about where Absolutely. the world could take them, mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely. Yeah. And in a way also uh, honoring all this ancestry that mm -hmm. brought me here, basically. Mm -hmm. So there's a delicate dance between those two things. Mm -hmm. And, <clears throat> and, I, and I, this might be a bit, bit controversial, but... Uh, I have found more barriers within the indigenous uh, world, in mm -hmm. a way, with mm -hmm. the transsexualism. Okay. And I have found barriers in the transgender uh, world with the indig indigenous. Uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's, it's like, um, th there's a thing in, 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 in American USA, you know, that happens, uh, that there's this tension between... Uh, Latinos and uh, and indigenous people, yes, yes. right? Because mm -hmm. the, yes. because it, it's like they're overlap in right. some spaces, right. Right. and and that generates competition. I believe. Okay. okay. I think it, it it's just because uh, the system is rigged basically, and and you're mm -hmm. put on a ring to okay. fight for resources. So I think that whoever you put in the same condition will will react the same, no matter. Mm -hmm. No matter where they come from, you know, you, you don't need to be to be anything to to fall into mm -hmm. the, that competition paradigm. Mm -hmm. That is that is wonderful, Alejandra. And I'm, I'm I wish that I will be there in another ten or twenty years when you're talking to these young um, people uh, when you're sharing your life story to see how much you've you know, um, mature and grown up and telling that story to others to inspire them to, um, you know, uh, hold their hand and uh, make this place a more healthier, healthier place um, than we are finding ourselves in. And I think you, me and a lot of people um, in the Jikas also, uh, that is what they're, you know, um, what they're committed to, uh, you know, making this place a healthier one um, for the for the future generations and for, to a certain extent to ourselves, our generations as well. Um, Alejandra, um, thank you for sharing this very intimate and very personal story with us. And is there anything else that you would like to add um, that I couldn't ask you? Um, probably big about your community work or probably about um, your um, research or academic work. Is there anything else that you might like to add perhaps? Um, yeah, I, I would like, maybe I would like to share a story of how, how I got to Jikas maybe. Oh it's, yes, absolutely. Yes. B because it's, it's like a three part story, you know, it's okay. like, it's like a tragic, tragic comedy in a way. Okay. <laughs> okay. So um, I was studying architecture. I uh -huh. was like maybe 24 years old at the time. Right. I was in my fourth year, you know. Uh-huh. Uh, and Chile at that moment was like horrible. Okay. Everything was dead. Everything was uh, all this, I don't know, tension built between it. it and every mm -hmm. one of us, because mm -hmm. we needed this uprising, this like, poof. Okay. So everything was working like in a very traditional and tight way, you know? Right. Uh, according to money, I'm, I'm talking about money. So mm -hmm. I have starting mm -hmm. troubles with money. Mm -hmm. And they basically said that if you don't get money, like mm -hmm. pretty damn soon, mm -hmm. you can't keep studying. And all my options were debt, you know, like right. debt, debt, debt. Mm -hmm. And a lot of banks actually came and, and offered me a lot of loans, okay. horrible loans with very high interest, mm -hmm. 20 years, 30 years long. Mm -hmm. And it hit me and I said, I don't have the money. 
yeah. you know you know it's it's yeah. like yeah. i don't have the money i don't want to create this false money mm-hmm. in order to live a false reality i don't know <laughs> that is true and, yes and i started to go down that road mm-hmm. and i told them that uh, it was not going to happen i was not right. going to take a loan and, and they say like uh okay, then in two more years, if you don't solve this, you're going to be eliminated from the system. Okay. And I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. well, that's a possibility. I'll take okay. it. Okay. Um, I tried to work it out with, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. with the people who are in power there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they honestly didn't have the will. And they told me, so like, uh, you need mm-hmm. will to do this. Mm-hmm. And I don't have the will to do it for you. So mm-hmm. sorry. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was really heartbroken because I, in the student movements, I like give my life to the university mm-hmm. in a way. Mm-hmm. So uh, I was in strategic planning, okay. uh, in the organic. Uh, I, I did a lot of things for, for them and, and I didn't charge. And, right, and right. that was a good lesson that I learned. Mm-hmm. I didn't charge. Mm-hmm. And the professor that was adjointed to me, like we have to do this like in a three estamental way okay. with administrative teachers and students mm-hmm. and everybody got paid but me, you know, <laughs> and I worked for three and a half months, you know, the mission, the vision of an architecture student and a right. lot of stuff that they, they are using right now today, maybe not today, maybe they change it already. Mm-hmm. But it was pretty good what, what I came up with. Right, so I think they're still right. used to me. Mm-hmm. And okay. I remember going, like, leaving the university and sitting, waiting for the bus. Mm-hmm. And I see this uh, huge, uh, uh, how can I say that? It's this huge ad, you know, mm-hmm. for, for the, the career that I was getting out right. of. Right, right. And it, and it was so shocking that it has mm. my words written in there wow, wow. you know okay and and they were closing the door at me mm-hmm. while losing my words it's a bit like like Creston stories okay <laughs> like, yeah and, needs to share and, his stories yes and yeah. i was in waiting for the bus and i mm-hmm. look up in the sky and i said you know mm-hmm. f this i Absolutely. i wish for a free college Mm. one that actually pays me when I'm when I'm done yeah. when I'm done with it that it's a whole new approach to knowledge to everything and I would love for it to be with people from all over the world you know mm-hmm. that was a lot of years ago right fast forward to today and mm-hmm. well to last year and mm-hmm. I, I met Pancho thanks to my community okay. Francisco Gonzalez mm-hmm. the, the dean mm-hmm. so uh, he told my brother uh, you know what mm-hmm. tell Alejandro I was Alejandro at that moment yeah, to, yeah. tell Alejandro that uh, he needs to check this out you know? okay the okay. VA, the VAMA program Okay. And I was like, all right. I sent a mail to Kristen. Mm-hmm. Kristen had a meeting with me like two, three days later. We right. have a 20 minute talk. <laughs> and I was and I was in, you know. Yeah. And I'm yeah. And I remember the moment I made that wish and and it all hits to me. Like it, it, it's amazing. Uh, by that exercise, how many things in life you have said to yourself mm-hmm. or out loud mm-hmm. that you find yourself into maybe not exactly as you said it but right like grasping it pretty pretty good you know mm-hmm. i mean jikas it's it's that so absolutely so I, I think it's crazy in a way but in a way it's what it's meant to be i mean if mm-hmm. i haven't had all, all the academic um problems that I had with money mm-hmm. I wouldn't be cherishing Jika's today as much Absolutely. as I, I do this that that is something that I've been thinking to myself as well had I been able to fund myself at a very conservative university I will never be able to meet this amazing group of people you know that I find myself um totally in 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 harmony with like you know for example we in our classes we we are we are so um we are so comfortable with each other and 
the way we exchange our opinions, um, you know, uh, initiate discussions. I think I think it's one of the most wonderful things that that has happened to me um, finding Jikas. Um, I think Alejandra, this podcast is ultimately going to be about Jikas. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so it's 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 wonderful, and that's where I met people like you um, and uh, and Rick, who 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 does a lot of work, you know, um, uh, for for the for the for the future generation. So yeah, yeah, there's there's a lot of things going on. There's a mm-hmm. lot of amazing people. Mm-hmm. With uh, I think um, what really shocks me the most, mm-hmm. like shock me to the core in the best way possible Mm -hmm. it's to be able to uh to know that you maybe your approach Mm -hmm. your individual approach that that might seem like off Mm -hmm. in in your in in our context maybe right right. uh, it makes total sense when we're we're all having these conversations together it's mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's like we all come from that uh, special place but right. also from so many different places mm-hmm. that crosses all our lives that uh, sharing them it's it's i think it's mandatory and mm-hmm. but also it's unprecedented i mean i don't think uh, ever in humanity people have the chance to talk from such different bra- backgrounds, like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. in a clique about yeah. uh, Hegel, Lacan, about, yeah. about things that actually shape the, the mainstream thought of Western um, society, that, yeah. that it's ingrained in almost the whole world, basically. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Alejandra, for having this very beautiful conversation. I think um, it gave a lot of space for both of us to think about the trajectories of work that we are doing. And the, the, the question is like, who are we doing this for? And uh, why are we doing this for? And um, I find a lot of inspiration in, in your work and the world that you believe in. Uh, and I'm really grateful I had this conversation. Um, Thank you, Alejandra. And uh, I think we'll be able to meet with another episode probably um, in future uh, where we could talk about um, your, your other aspects, um, you know, probably when you graduated from Shrikas and when we are finding our ways through it. Thank you very much, Alejandra. Um, nice having you. And I wish you all the best for all your work. Thank you, Tilini. Thank you so much. It was an amazing conversation. I feel really confident to share a lot of things. So mm-hmm. I hope that someone out there resonates with it. Absolutely. And if it's not, uh, well, I hope that uh, I, I saw the, the seed of doubt, maybe, you know, mm-hmm. that reality might not be how you, how you think it is. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that are like right at the, our hand, you know, mm-hmm. people with different experiences mm-hmm. that we can contrast with ourselves. And I think that's a wonderful exercise. Mm-hmm. So thank you for having me. It was amazing. Uh, hope uh, this happens in the future again. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>